Everton Football Club finds itself at a crossroads, facing a difficult choice for its future. The proposed takeover by 777 partners, a Florida-based investor with a questionable history, has raised concerns among fans and regulators alike. But ultimately, the decision lies with the Premier League. While the government's independent regulator may eventually have a say in such matters, the fact remains that 777 partners would not have reached this stage without confidence in passing the Premier League's owners and directors' test. However, the investors' past, including a conviction for cocaine trafficking, is just one of many concerns about their suitability as owners. The multi-club model employed by 777 partners has made regulation and oversight of clubs nearly impossible for football regulators. Allegations of unpaid debts, fraud, and illegal loans have plagued their portfolio of European club investments. Yet, the investor vehemently denies these claims, stating that they conduct their businesses in accordance with local laws and regulations. The truth is, investors like 777 partners target clubs like Everton because no one else wants the burden of such liabilities. These clubs are often in distress, heavily indebted, and on the brink of relegation. Shifting regulation from the Premier League to the government may not change this reality. Even stricter financial controls may not have prevented Everton's owner, Farhad Moshiri, from spending hundreds of millions without achieving the desired success. The government has made it clear that it will not stand in the way of wealthy individuals or nation-states owning clubs. The Premier League's new owners and directors test includes a list of sanctioned individuals, but it lacks a definitive measure for passing the smell test. The government's proposed tests for owners' integrity, honesty, financial soundness, and competence sound promising, but the question remains, how will these tests be implemented? The voices of fans who have protested against 777 partners' ownership of clubs like Red Star FC and Standard Liege should carry weight in the consultation process. After all, this was a fan-led review of football governance. The regulator's proposal for owners to secure bank guarantees in case of emergencies may discourage takeovers with limited or dubious funding sources. However, it may also deter potential owners who could have made positive contributions to the club. Ultimately, Everton's future is a textbook Hobson's choice. Either accept a buyer with troubling questions that cannot be answered within the scope of the government's powers, or risk the club's future by remaining on the brink. Unfortunately, there is rarely an ideal option in these situations. Everton needs someone, anyone, to save it from its current predicament.